Hello, it's Jane here. I'm up at the allotment. It's absolutely boiling. So I thought, what better time of year or place to be than to get out there, pick some produce and cook up a little alfresco supper. Okay, so one of the first things you might have noticed is um, I'm not sitting in my usual spot. <laughs> That's because I think I finally learned that um, sitting with the sun in your eyes isn't very good either for your eyes or for the video when you play it back and watch it because I think most of the last video I was like this or this or this because the sun was in my eyes. So today I found a really nice shady spot underneath this beautiful, beautiful russet apple tree. I mean, you know, we should have thinned those out a lot more, but that's another story. Um, and a buddley, I don't know if you can see it, I don't know if it's on camera, to my left here. So every now and then you're probably going to get a little butterfly or bee buzzing in front. But that's all very nice. They're probably interested to see what I'm doing. But yes, I just... I've been wanting to do this for a while, to actually come along to the plot, pick something and actually cook it while it's so, so fresh. And I mean, if you're anything like me at the moment, your harvests are starting to come in. Some of the photos I've seen on social media are brilliant, you know, I mean, just look at Kelly's onions. but. You know, we're all starting to bring produce in, take it home, prepare it. If we're not eating it straight away, we're getting it ready. We're getting it ready to dry. We're getting it ready to put in the freezer. And I think sometimes it's just nice to actually stop and enjoy what we've got. So what I'm going to do today, I'm going to put together, I call it a supper. Probably by the time we eat it, it'll be about six, half six in the evening. To me, a supper as a northern lass is something you have just before you go to bed. So in the olden times, maybe a, a cup of hot milk and a piece of toast. In the more modern times, maybe a glass of wine. Um, but and some olives. Um, but yes, in where I came from, we used to call it tea. It was tea. That was your evening meal. Was tea. So whichever you call it, I'm going to do one today. Um, again, when I was in bed last night, I keep having these moments. Um, I was saying, well, what could I do? Because actually, there's quite a lot coming in. So I could, one of my thoughts was to do a ribolletta style stew. And then I thought one of the main ingredients I use in a ribolletta is, um, or are, root vegetables. So your carrots and your parsnips and that, that sort of thing. And we really haven't got many of those coming up at the moment at all, or if we have, they're very, very small. So. I thought about that and then I thought, actually, let's see what we've got. We've got a few lettuce leaves left because we've had a big glut and now the rest are only just teeny tiny. We've got cherry tomatoes. We've got cucumber. You can see where this is going, can't you? <laughs> and we've got bits and bobs, but then we've got things that you can cook. So we've got our potatoes. We've got our courgettes. We've got our broad beans. So what I'm actually going to do today is combine the lot, put them all together and make them into a warm salad. Now the idea is I don't really want to use anything that I don't pick today. So, but I have cheated with one thing. I'll come back to that later on. Um, but to get things going, I've got out my little stove, which has usually got a kettle on it. And I have got, you know what, I haven't actually used this for oh it's working <laughs> for months but yeah I've hopefully got enough gas in the cartridge to boil that water I've got my little lid on that and while that starts to boil I'll show you the first thing that I'm going to get ready because this is going to need preparing first and yes it's not a chopping board it's an old tray because best laid plans I got all the way to the gate and realised that uh, I hadn't brought a chopping board with me. So I've got an upside down wooden tray. It is clean. 
I've used my little cloth there, a little bit of water, I've given it a really good wipe over so I know that's clean. But one of the first things I want to do, these were, oh, I'm saying picked today, I'm cheating really, these were picked the other day, I think I showed these on, yeah I did, I showed these on last week's video and they've been sitting in the shed, basically curing a little bit and these are the wonderful pink fir apple and they're wonderful not only because, I'm going to sneeze, bless me, right, <laughs> they're wonderful not only because they're very silly shapes but as I said in the last video, video before last, the flavour is just beautiful. So the only thing with them is because you've got funny shapes, let's see if I can show you without tripping over a mouldy apple. Can you see that? Let me see, I'm going to turn you around because I can't see if you can see. There we are, look at that. Look at that little fella. I don't know, he's in a little, little boat sailing along or something, something else. It's always... There's always someone you know who looks like one of these, but because of these little knobbly bits, they're a, oh, they're a tinker to peel. So all I'm going to do to these today is scrub them. And to scrub them, I have actually bought a little bowl. Actually, it's a plant pot, as you probably can tell. And a little bit of, I've lost one there, potato down. A little bit of fresh water and all I'm going to do is just ever so lightly scrub these because the peel's absolutely fine, it's not thick, it's really really nice. So if I scrub these I can pop them in and then, excuse me, this wasn't part of the plan. While they're cooking, while they're cooking, I can be going round and seeing what else there is to pick. I mean, I've got a good idea what I'm going to do, as I mentioned to you, but these are probably the only things I'm going to clean like this because Mike would disagree with me here and you might disagree with me, let me know. I know that everything I pick in this garden, nothing, there's been nothing untoward sprayed on it. That's all you need to do. Where can I put that now? Put that there. Um, there haven't been any nasty chemicals, you know. They might have been, let's think what the potatoes might have been sprayed with. If you've treated them for blight, you might have put something on the leaves. But really, these have had nothing but good old muck and a lot of love. And I think, keeping an eye on that actually, I think that means they don't really need a lot of scrubbing. I mean, if we're a bit funny about eating somewhere a worm might have had a little sleep or a fly might have landed for a little look around then fair enough and obviously if you see things like slug trails I mean the thing is if you're only doing a small amount like this you can pick things off you can rub them off but overall I do tend not to wash anything I don't know if you get it from you know somewhere else or if you get it from the shop actually even then I don't sometimes and I know there was um, a whole hoo-ha wasn't there about wash lettuce leaves uh, they're not really very clean and Mike insists that we always wash them again I don't I tend to tell him I have but I haven't <laughs> watch this video now and he'll know I think he knows anyway okay that's all you need to do for them these little scrubbing brushes I absolutely love them they're getting all the little knobbly bits but uh, that's it they're clean they're knobbly but they're clean and let's face it they are going I want to pull this onto something where it'll be best used oh I've got comfrey behind me there I'll give the comfrey a treat um there we go need to do anything else to them they're going to be boiled anyway that's what I was going to say they're going to get a good old boiler right that can go away as can that won't be needing that again a little makeshift chopping board hopefully I brought the knife and then oh let me just check that I don't think oh actually you know what that is coming to a boil already uh, <laughs> it's a bit high up this must be what it's like if you're a child in your parents kitchen and you don't quite reach the worktop you know we used to always make our girls sit on those stand on those little stools 
and uh, invariably one of them would fall off but uh, yeah it's quite nice they are it's like um it's like being a bit younger not a lot of things make me feel very young these days but <laughs> that does now actually as you can see oh i've left one in there but as you can see i'm only cooking this for mike and i this is going to be quite enough this is going to be the basis of my salad and i'm just chopping them into edible sized chunks that's not right is it edible sized chunks what am i trying to say right sized chunks got there right okay and these got to be careful with this because it's enamel it will get hot are going to go let's do it a safer way jane they're going to go straight in there and as they really not safe as they are going in how can I do that a little bit safer? Can't, can I? Nearly done. As they go in, lid back on. I am going to have to keep an eye on it. And let's go around the garden and see what else we can put in our salad. Well, as I'm sure you can imagine, my first port of call is the polytunnel, which, you know, is absolutely brimming at the moment with these beautiful, huge tomatoes not as many of them as i would like but big anyway but i'm not after those today what i'm after is this little fella who's hiding over here and i'm just going to zoom in a bit hopefully and show you who i mean let's have a little look at you young man your day has come there we are can you see him there he's a fine sized cucumber Give him a twist. In he goes. Okay, the next thing to join the crew is this courgette. Now, it took me a long time to work out why they're this colour. And basically, I bought a packet of seed called Tristar, which include a green, a yellow and a white courgette. And this one, I think, is called Opal. I just thought it was a bit anemic but anyway um, the difference with these and your ordinary courgette is these are really really sweet so these I think or this will be quite acceptable in my little alfresco salad mm -hmm. now I've come down to the bottom greenhouse and these tomatoes what they lack in size, they absolutely make up for in flavour. So these are definitely going in. Okay, in the other greenhouse, we've got what's left of some of the onions drying out. And what we've got here, although it only looks a bit scraggy and small, that is going to be the perfect size for my salad. It's actually a Florence long-necked red onion, but it's actually going to be really lovely. Everything's got a place. It's a nice piece of garlic. Oh, and last but not least are some of these lovely, um, oh, some of these aren't quite ready, you know. I'm picking them anyway, they'll be nice and young. These lovely carmesin red beans that I haven't actually, oh, look at that. Oh my goodness, you can't see, I'm gonna show you. Look at the color on those. And apparently, if you cook them ever so slightly when they're young, they do keep their color. So we will test those out. But I think they are going to add a lovely splash of something to this salad. fashion we've just had a couple of visitors drop in <laughs> and that means I um, oh, oh got wobbly chair I just got talking and my potatoes have overboiled a little bit so I have drained the potatoes 
I don't know if you can see from there, they are, oh, they've cooled down already, actually. They're like a lovely yellow color. And I never learn to do this every time, don't I? They are so waxy. They're beautiful. Right, okay, so that's my base. I've got a tiny bit of water left, which fortunately I did remember to switch this off. Let's see if I can get it to start again. I, I want to get that tiny bit of water on the go because the first thing I want to sort out are my broad beans. So, it's delicious. I've got a little Heidi all basket down here that I'm putting everything in. As I showed you down there, these have got beautiful pink beans in them and I'm hoping, ah, right, okay. These are ever so slightly bigger and they're not as pink. So I'm wondering if they get paler as they get older. I do need something to put these in, don't I? Got a plate. Okay, oh, that's dirty. We need to wash that one. That's typical, isn't it? That was clean. Let's move those out the way. We'll put those there. Look at this. I couldn't resist picking those. I mean, they're just bits and pieces. And most of those were grown for um, my eldest daughter's wedding, which was supposed to be at the end of this month. So whilst it's terrible that it's all had to be cancelled, I'm really benefiting from her flowers. So thanks, Charlotte. <laughs> um, it shows me what I can grow again next time anyway. So yeah, not many to a pod, only three to a pod there. But these are broad beans and I absolutely love them if you can be bothered to double pod. And by that I mean give them a very quick boil and then once they have boiled, I'll show you once one of these is done, you literally just, that's the noise they make, pop them out of the outer skin. And they're really, really lovely. And of course you can make all sorts with them not least um, broad bean hummus. I think Vivi does a lovely, lovely broad bean hummus. I think it's Vivi, I hope it's you Vivi. Um, she does some brilliant things anyway. But these are just fine. And what these are doing of course, are adding a little bit of protein to my salad. So any sort of beans that you're growing, of course, are absolutely jam packed with protein. Of course, if I'd been doing chickpeas this year, they would have been perfect as well. But actually, none of my beans that I'm growing as pulses, if you like, so the Gigantes, all that sort, none of those have grown yet, or rather they're not really packing in. These were sown late for broad beans. These were like a second sowing. Back in, oh, I'm pretty sure it was May. And so these are late broad beans as opposed to early runners. Okay, so. I told you what I'm like with multitasking. But yeah, the sun's gone down a bit now as well. I think it's after six o'clock now. Really starting to notice recently that the uh, nights are drawing in. Although the good thing about that is autumn, which I think I've said before, always my favorite time of the year. I love it. I love when it used to start a bit of a chill in there. It's the smell. It's a smell as well. I mean, Mike's lit a bonfire today, so it feels a bit autumnal anyway. We actually are, latter potatoes are showing signs of blight. So he has trimmed off the tops, left the potatoes in the soil, a la Terry King. Thank you for that comment, Terry, on the last time when I asked people what they did with their potatoes. Yeah, and I think part of the reason for that is you don't want to be pulling up the potatoes through all the blighted plant um, especially if you're going to store them so we're going to leave the potatoes in for now and dig them up as we go along right all the compost where can I put those I haven't got enough bowls oh I know here we are I've got a little basket to put my composty things in but where do I put that see that's that's okay let's put those so I've got a lovely, lovely plateful of crimsony beans. What I thought was strange about them though, 
I'm let me just show you. I'm doing these in this little strainer here. So they're not actually sitting in the water because there's only a couple of waters, a couple of inches of water left in there. What is, um, what was going to say? Strange about them. Yes, I thought they would have, oh, hidey hole basket. <laughs> I thought they'd have red flowers, but they haven't. So anyway, they are lovely. They look lovely and hopefully they'll taste good. Right, now I need my little not really chopping board because I've got some lettuce. This is the last little bit of lettuce we've got. I'm not going to have the stalks because they have started to go a little bit bitter, but it's like a romaine lettuce. And all I am going to do, you'll love my preparation. That's it. <laughs> that is as prepared as I go. Okay. Okay. Tear the leaves, There's nothing nothing fancy not going to chop them why bother um right same with these tomatoes are so small i mean some of those can just go in whole again bite-sized pieces look at that that's ridiculous i mean that's a small tomato that's just ridiculous but i'm going to put them in that is coming to the boil now i can hear it that's one for the slugs and again, as you're picking them, these aren't being washed, but you can have a good look over and see that they are clean, which they are, which is good. Now, I said before, this was gonna be a warm salad. And what I'm saying to you now is the potatoes are cool and everything else is cold, but I'm hoping by the time we get to eat it, the potatoes will have retained a little bit of the warmth, as will the broad beans so it should just wilt it a little tiny bit bit teeny tiny bit bit <laughs> that's one way of saving it as i say this just too high remember the chopping board next time jane okay right okay tomatoes and plenty of them and what you can see straight away i mean my peppers aren't ready yet i wish my peppers had been ready um look at these colors already can you see i don't even know if you can see that you know there we go cucumber this is one that's got the little prickles on but they just wipe off i'm not going to peel it i am literally that can go back in there for later just going to slice into a nice cucumber <laughs> cucumber style slices again this is only going to be for the two of us if i was at home now that would just Oh, you know what? I'm going to do it. Red onion. Now, even though I said our onion harvest this year has been terrible, let's just check on these steaming away nicely um they're really tasty and even though this one's only tiny it is perfect for a small salad in fact it's perfect for a big salad but i'm only going to use a bit of it i love raw onion i've mentioned it before mike doesn't understand he thinks i do it on purpose to be antisocial, but i do love i love it i it, there's something about the sweetness of it that I really like, and especially red onion. So, this, I won't put too much on, because I'm being considerate. A considerate cook, chef, put a together a, of a salad. <laughs> La -da -da. Put that over, put that over, sprinkle them along. And then, that one's decided to jump for it. Okay, all you're doing is you're just layering up a lovely, lovely, healthy, that's clean, salad. I do want to keep an eye on those. I don't want them to go tough. And that's the thing with broad beans. If you boil them, I think that's why they get such a bad name. People boil them forever and they, they can go tough. Right, I've got my courgette. What should I do? Should I put a bit in? I'm going to put a bit in. Teeny tiny bit, bit again. Only maybe that bit, just for whoo, just for a little taste and to 
make it slightly different from the courgettes, sorry, from the cucumber, I'm going to chop this julienne style. That almost made it sound like I know what I'm doing. So there we are, just nice and small. Of course, what you could do um, is grate it if you wanted to. So if you wanted to use the courgette, but didn't actually, oh, Rocky's off. Didn't actually want to have too much of the taste. You would do it like that. Okay, I'm keeping an eye on them, keeping an eye on them. And the last thing I want to do before I put these on, just check with my knife. They have got a grotty colour actually. I think they're pretty much done. I'll show you, yeah, they've lost a bit of their colour, which is a shame. But, right, okay, I'm going to turn those off. Off, yeah. Um, probably hitting someone on the head over there. <laughs> Just keep tossing these things. The last thing I'm going to do, the one thing I have cheated with, if I can find it. Oh, heck, it's upside down. Nope, that's okay. I have brought up a tiny bit of dressing from home. So I should have done this at the start, actually, to let the garlic infuse. All that is, is a little bit of olive oil and a bit of lemon I think there's a pip yeah there's a pip in there somewhere and what I want to do is my little bit of garlic I am just going to I don't know if I can smash it on this plate really oh, I might do it on that one a little bit of garlic I can't remember what sort it was again garlic harvest not good this year must do better next year and will do better it's going to be a good year next year that's it never found a gardener who's not an optimist otherwise you just wouldn't carry on would you because there's so many things can go wrong like I say the um, the blight on the potatoes now it's actually started on the outdoor tomatoes fortunately touch wood the indoor tomatoes are okay so far shall I smash that I never know how to smash it properly and to be honest because we're on this not really chopping board I'm not going to do it like that I'm just going to give it a mash up of course with garlic the more it's mashed, the more it's chopped, the more flavour can come out. But I'm a little bit worried. <laughs> we'll get splinters off the tray. So, just a very, very quick one, like that. There we are. The sun's coming out again. Oh, I'm so pleased I've done this. It's such a lovely evening to be up here said before it's my favorite time up at the plot but right okay let's get some of that in there it's going to be very very garlicky I mean really the fact is I'm putting this in so late now I could have just put it straight on the uh, salad couldn't I but that would be cruel okay I think that's quite enough okay let me put that on there and all you're doing this is what I love about doing it in jars this was an old um we used to collect loads of stuff from the 20s and the 30s and this was out of one of those old um, like a barber's kit like a shaving kit so that would have had the talcum or some sort of lotion in for the gents beard and uh, I just love it as a little object sadly it's not watertight which would be a lot more useful but yeah brilliant for things like making your dressings that's all you've got to do if you wanted to you could put some balsamic vinegar in there but I've got the lemon the lemon is my acid the oil is there as the carrier if you like and the garlic is my flavoring so like I say the longer you leave it the better it is that's ready to go that can now oh no I've got some nice pretty bits in there I'll show you in a minute in fact let me put this one on now this ideally I would use basil but this let me just check the red lights on here but this um, it's just not ready okay so I've got parsley giant parsley which is growing in the bottom greenhouse I was going to pot it up but actually you know what I'm just using it as I get it so there we are Hold on, the neighbour's calling me one second. Oh dear, yes. Rocky had gone to visit the neighbour's chickens. <laughs> He's fine, he just looks at them. I think he wants to play. I don't know what sort of game he wants to play. Right, okay, that's it. Broad beans. Move that out the way. That's going to spell garlicky now forevermore. These are now off. 
again, what kind of drain them? Oh, they're drains, aren't they, really? Now, look, actually, I need to show you closer, don't I? If I show you, these have got a horrible, what I only I can only describe as puce, which I'm a little bit disappointed by, can you see? But, oh, hot, 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 hot. Let me show you, put that there. If I pop that out of there now, look at that green. Oh, look at that. How beautiful is that? And of course that in a salad, it's just gorgeous, but I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna pop all those, because I'm lazy. And I'm gonna say, actually, shall I try the difference? Right, okay, without. Without a pod, delicious. Let's try one with a pod. Hot, 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 hot. Well, that one looks a bit dodgy, actually. Whoa! With a pod. You know what? That's absolutely fine. Okay. Well, next stage. <laughs> On with the protein. Okay. Oh yes, right, okay. This is the best bit. Now, if it was at home, I probably would use my fingers, but, well, I'm probably gonna have to actually, because I can't find my bits and pieces. Here we are. What I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna be very, very posh and use a spoon, a salad spoon and a fork. Oh no, I'm not, no, I'm not. What I'm gonna do, shall I put this on? Yeah, I'll put this on and this will all get mixed in beautifully. Okay, measure it out with a lid. Could just drizzle it, but I don't trust myself. I don't know if you can tell either, but the sun keeps coming out and lighting up. Well, you can't see it. This side just looks beautiful, <laughs> but you can't see it. You just have to take my word for it. Okay, you know what? I'm not gonna toss it. I'm gonna leave it like that. I'm gonna let that drain through. And then the finishing touch I'm going to bring, bring the camera over and show you. What could be better than being able to garnish with some flowers from the garden? hope you've enjoyed this. I've really enjoyed making this video. It's been super relaxing and all I need now is to sit down in some of this beautiful evening sunshine with a fantastic plateful of homemade salad and maybe a cheeky glass of wine. So I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. Um, if so, come along to the Facebook group, come along and say hi on Instagram, subscribe, hit the button, hit the bell share with your friends um, but please try and leave a comment because I love your comments let me know what you've been doing what have you been cooking from your garden hopefully you'll have a gorgeous week and I'll see you again very soon bye